Good morning again. Yes, I'm wearing the same outfit. But I've got a new visual aid and a new topic. Aggregate corridor. Ag corridor, Spencer. In my previous video, which if you haven't watched yet, which was talking about stop loss, uh, specific stop loss and aggregate stop loss insurance, I referenced a term in that video called the attachment point. What I have described here is the aggregate corridor, which is the buffer that's added on to expected claims in order to calculate that attachment point. So some of those terms you'll get more comfortable with them as you hear them more often, but we are talking about the aggregate corridor, which is the buffer put on expected claims to calculate attachment point. So in this graph, I have, um, basically this is a, uh, a year. We have all the months from January through December. The blue line, is expected claims. In that previous video, again, I referenced an easy number to, to remember. Let's say the insurance carrier calculates your, the employer's aggregate uh, or calculates their expected claims to be $1 million, okay? They are then going to put on a buffer. Uh, most common is 25%. So they put on a 25% buffer also known as the aggregate corridor, this number or this sort of space in between, which I highlighted with red lines, which gets us to an attachment point. One million plus 25% is 1.25 million. So in that previous video, I talked about when aggregate insurance or aggregate reimbursement more specifically would come into to play. And so in this graph, I have the monthly fluctuation of aggregate claims Aggregate meaning, again, those, all those claims that are pooling up for every member combined underneath this specific deductible. And so you can see the start of the plan there, you know, they're running pretty well. Ooh, they popped up over in April. They, they exceeded that monthly attachment point, okay? And the reason why I say monthly is every underwriter, when they give you a stop loss quote, will give you a monthly aggregate factor, which is used to calculate the annual attachment point. And the reason they give it to you monthly is headcount fluctuates month to month. And there also is something that can come into play theoretically uh, called the minimum attachment point, which we won't get into today. But the reason I've got it plotted monthly is because, of course, as claims come in, they don't follow a linear trend. There's going to be fluctuation from month to month. And that's where specific stop loss helps you for that wild crazy claim per individual, and then aggregate helps you with these monthly fluctuations. Okay, you're going to budget monthly in a predictable manner, somewhere based on what your consultant uh, has advised, somewhere between these numbers, you know, maybe slightly below, somewhere in between, somewhere you're not going to budget above the maximum liability, of course. But this is, a, this is an illustration of what those monthly claims will look like. Now in this illustration, you, you could see, hey, there's a couple times that they've exceeded the aggregate corridor. Well, in most cases, just because you exceeded it in that particular month doesn't mean you're going to get reimbursement. What it'll mean, unless you buy something called aggregate accommodation, which is a separate topic, again, for a separate video, but what this means is those claims will fluctuate, sometimes below that number expected, sometimes above. We get to the end of the year, we land somewhere probably most likely in between that corridor, um, depending on that employer's you know, plan year and the policy and the risk and all that stuff. So you'll land somewhere in between. But in this scenario, this employer didn't, at the end of the year, and this is a basic illustration, there's no run out, but the employer did not at the end of the year actually end up above that attachment point. So what does that mean? Well, there'll be a reconciliation period, of course, if there's some run out claims that bump them up over it, then there would be a reimbursement. But in the scenario I just drew, even though they breached in two, two uh, individual months, the overall plan year did not exceed that $1.25 million attachment point. So yes, they ended up higher than expected, they didn't exceed that attachment point. So in this particular scenario, the stop loss carrier will not be reimbursing under the ag part of the contract, okay? Because they landed below that line. And this is why, especially with a 25% buffer, what that basically means is the underwriter is gonna have to miss by 25%. Sometimes it's lower. Um, you, know, you see 20% corridors, 15% corridors, some level funded contracts have 10% corridors. But for this particular one, the most common is 25% or self-funded. That means an underwriter would have to mispredict by 25% in order for that aggregate uh, coverage to come into play. 
Exceedingly rare instance does happen. It also highlights why this is the less expensive of the two uh, between spec and ag coverage, because this becomes predictable, especially if you have really good claims history, you know, two, three, or four years of claims history, where it, you, know, you are able to you know, weight those appropriately as an underwriter and then trend them forward, and you're probably gonna be within 25%. Most underwriters, very smart people, Let's say all of them are very smart people. And missing by 25% either means they had really bad data, somehow made a mistake, and or, um, you know, sometimes there's really bad claims years. That does happen. Or you could theoretically see where they get way too aggressive on that attachment point calculation in order to win the business. That does happen. But in summation, this is the aggregate corridor. This is the buffer that underwriters use to predict the attachment point, which is based off an expected claims number. So I hope, I hope that helps. Again, hope that stimulated some questions. Maybe I uh, didn't explain something thoroughly enough. You let me know in the comments below. Always good to see you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.